So welcome to Beauty of Colors podcast, Natalie. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. You're very welcome. So Natalie, you tell the listeners about you and your passion in helping women discover their purpose. Yeah, so I am, I'm a lover of life. I'm a dreamer. I'm a people person. And I'm very grateful for everything that I've been blessed with. And I'm really trying to make the best of this life that I have, because I really believe that we should all be living in fulfillment. We should all be pacing our purpose. We should all be living joyfully. And so I'm a holistic life coach and my background is in wellness. And for me, you know, I kind of came into this passion when I had gone through a really difficult time in life. And maybe we'll get into that later. But when I emerged from that, I was like, you know what? Too many people are going through the hamster wheel. They're just going through the same thing, the same motions day in, day out. They're doing, if they're, if they're a mom, they're just taking care of the kids. If they're a wife, they're taking care of their spouse. If they're uh, an employee, they're taking care of work matters. If they work in the community, they're taking care of other things, right? Mm -hmm. And so I just find that a lot of women are always pouring into everybody else except for themselves. And so what happens is their cup is empty, right? And so for me, um, that's why I started my own podcast. It's called From a Full Cup. It's mm -hmm. the name of my business in general. Mm -hmm. But the reason for that is because we know, we always hear that, oh, you shouldn't pour from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. But that's not enough. If we're not pouring from an empty cup, it's because we are intentionally filling our cup. And okay. so I am passionate about helping women intentionally fill their cup. So Natalie, what do you mean by you do not have to pour from an empty cup? What exactly is this phrase? What do you mean by that? Yeah, that's a good question. So think about life and think about all of us have our own cup. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that your cup, let's imagine the cup is full of water and water is everything that you have to give to somebody else, your skills, your talents, your joys, your passions, everything that you can do for somebody else. As you start giving those away to everybody, you give your energy, you give your money, you give your time, you give your resources, your cup starts to run empty. Now, the idea is that as you're pouring out, more water is coming back in. But if you just continue pouring until your cup is empty and nothing is pouring back in, well, guess what? When you turn that cup, the cup is upside down. There's nothing left to give. So now what? But guess what? Those people, they still keep giving. So I don't know what they're doing if they're finding the ceramic of the cup or, or they're giving air, but they're running on empty. And so the idea is if we're going to be pouring out to others, which is important, we're not made in this life to be selfish and keep things to ourselves. We want to help. We want to serve. We want to love. We want to give. But we need to also be on the receiving end of that and keep pouring back in, keep replenishing our water so that when we serve others, it's actually from the overflow. We don't have to worry about the cup getting empty because as some comes out, more comes in. And, and ideally, if we can serve from the overflow, we stay full this, at the same time as we continue to serve others. But unfortunately for women, that's just not the case most times. Mm -hmm. Most times they're running on empty or maybe they've got one drop left. Wow. So how do women refill that cup? You talk about they're given all of the, the energy and everything else. How do they refill their cup? Yeah, well, it starts with intention, right? You can never just magically fill your cup. You have to be intentional about it because society has not been designed and created for your cup to be filled. We come from a patriarchal society that always expects more from women in the first place. And so that's a systemic um, issue, right? So you're not going to just change that even if you want to in your mind. So you have to be intentional. What are the things I'm going to do? First of all, you have to value yourself. You have to value yourself and know your self-worth and say, these. I am deserving of putting myself first. I am deserving of even having a full cup. Because a lot of people don't even believe that their cup should be full. Right. They believe that they should be running ragged, running on empty, almost as if that's an honorable thing to do, because that's the narrative that's gone around. But no, we should have a full cup and it's not selfish. And so once we know our self-worth, once we know our value, now we can do things like we need to set boundaries. Okay, what's our time going to look like? How are we going to use our time? How are we going to allow people to treat us? Because some of some of what we do, we bring it on ourselves, right? We keep doing it for other people. That's a choice that you're making. So you have to set a boundary even with your own self. I'm only going to do this and I'm not going to do that because that 
pleases me and that helps me to protect my mental health, my well-being, my capacity, right? It's important to know what our capacity is. Then we think about self-care. So what are the things that we're doing for ourselves to take care of ourselves? Rest. Rest is something I talk about all the time. Do we even give ourselves permission to rest? You know, there's some people you go to their homes, they're always doing something. They, they can't even sit still for a second. Yeah. And you're like, it's okay. Like, just rest. And the thing is, we don't even grow up seeing our parents do that, especially our moms. They're always doing something. So we kind of inherit it. So that's why I said intention is so important. We have to know what it's like to sit down and just be still. Also to have leisure, to have play, go do something fun and joyful, not because it's for the kids or not because it's for somebody else, you're attending somebody else's function, something for yourself, right? So something I talk about along with self-care is joy care, because I think more women are starting to hear the message about self-care and that, that looks different for each person. Some people, it's their nails getting done or some people, it's a massage or some people, it's their hair, right? You know, Black women, we, we love to have our hair done, mm -hmm. but you can have your hair done and your nails done and and still be stressed, right? So that's not enough. We have to go deeper. We have to make changes to the way that we use our time and the way that we use our resources so that we are keep replenishing. Mm -hmm. Then we also need to tap into joy. Like so many women are just running through life tired and exhausted. A lot of my coaching clients, that's what they, that's what they come to me for. They say, I'm, I'm just so tired. I'm doing all of this stuff for everybody else and I'm not doing anything for myself. Mm -hmm. And so it's that recognition of how do I feel? And I don't like this feeling. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to prioritize myself. I want to be joyful. I want to mm -hmm. be vibrant. Right. And like, these are words that that's how I want to feel. I don't know if that's how you want to feel, how the listeners want to feel. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to decide that for themselves. Like I can't tell you, Mm -hmm. how to live your life you need to decide what do you want how do you want to feel mm -hmm. if you like feeling stressed and exhausted you know what you go for it mm -hmm. but if you don't then you need to say well what if I don't like how I'm feeling now how do I want to feel because that gives you the direction of what actions you're going to take in support of that feeling or those feelings wow so Natalie what point in your life that you felt that um you needed to refill your cup oh yeah. So, I mean, several times, but I think the biggest moment for me was actually during uh, a marital separation that came very unexpected to me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when your whole world kind of collapses right in front of you and you're like, sorry, what's happening right now? And so that really just kind of ruined everything for me. And I really had a mental health breakdown after that. I was so depressed because I only saw one outcome. And the mm -hmm. outcome was me married forever, right? And so when this marriage separation happened, I just couldn't reconcile. Like, why would this happen to me? I, I just don't understand. And so after staying in that kind of depressed state for, for quite some time, um, I, I was working with a coach and and he's also a friend. And she finally said to me, like, Natalie, you've, you've got to get out of this. Like, the situation's not changing right now. You've got to pull yourself up. And so I decided like, you know what, Natalie, fine. I, I have to accept where things are at now. What do I want for my life going forward? I spent all this time people pleasing or worrying about everybody else or putting everybody else first. And I didn't even realize how that was impacting only my marriage, but just my own personal well-being. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what, I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to focus on, on, of course, healing. That's the first step. Then focus on my own self-love, my own self-care and just like what do I want out of life what is important to me because so many times you can get lost in the role right you you just get lost if you're a mom you get lost in being a mom or being a wife or being a friend or being a daughter being an employee does being a business owner it's just so easy that your whole identity just gets caught up in these things and you kind of detach from yourself and so I had the opportunity to make a conscious effort to reconnect with myself and so um, I just kind of went on this whole wellness journey. And, you know, it's through that that I was really able to realize how important it is to prioritize your own well-being. Mm -hmm. And with my clients, I'm always working, we work on holistic wellness. So there's 12 pillars of wellness. Everything is interconnected. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times people might go to therapy or they're, they're working on one area, but they're not realizing how everything is interconnected. And so until you look at all the areas, there's 12 areas of wellness, right? So we have the external factors. So it's body, food, air, rest, sun, water, 
Then we have the internal elements. So we have finances, careers, relationships, spirituality, uh, purpose, and mindset. Mm -hmm. We have to look at that whole, all of those factors to really look at our own well-being and really be able to make that difference for ourselves mm -hmm. and to really um, reach a better place of harmony, peace, and joy. And so that was kind of the journey that I went on. And what the really exciting part about it is, not only did I restore the relationship with myself, but my marriage was restored. And so it just goes to show mm -hmm. when you, uh, and that was such a blessing, but when you focus on your own well-being, there are things that you can do to improve the relationship with yourself mm -hmm. and also with your partner, even if they don't want it. So personal well-being is directly tied to relationships in general. And mm -hmm. that's something I really want people to understand is because when your well-being personally is compromised, it actually compromises everyone else around you and the relationships that you have. But sometimes you don't notice until it's too late. And so many people think, okay, well, I'm just going to stay busy and I'm just going to stay stressed and this and, and I'll deal with that later. But sometimes you don't get the chance to fix something. Right. So it's like if you see signals now that you're in distress, something is array, awry in your relationships or just in your own well-being, that is a signal. Now is the time to take charge because you can make a difference in your life. Wow, Nazali. Yep, that's a lot of information. That That is, um, I'm happy that your marriage is restored and um, your cup you. is um, refilled and um, you're helping women out there do the same. Where can the listeners get in touch with you, Natalie? Yeah, so the easiest way to find me is on my podcast. It's called From a Full Cup. Mm -hmm. I can't say that I'm a lover of social media. Um, so, you know, I am not always as consistent there, but I'm very consistent on my podcast. But I also do have my Instagram page, which is from a full cod podcast as well. And mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, it's Natalie Mullen. And my website's nataliemullen.com as well. Okay, sounds good. So do you have any last words for the listeners about life and wellness? I know you talked a lot about that. But is there any last words that you can kind of give the, the listeners to guide them along um, their journey? I would say two things. One, slow down. Slow down and give yourself permission to do so. Because it's really hard to be able to move forward or even to identify what areas you need to work on if you're in the hustle and bustle of life. And so you just need to slow down and then you can take inventory and say, what's going on in my life? How do I feel? What areas are out of balance for me, right? I have a uh, free workshop, a free worksheet that you can download on my website and it will tell you how do you go through those 12 areas and assess them and score yourself and see what area is most out of alignment. Then just work on that one area. Work on getting that number up because your overall well-being will um, go up once you've addressed the major deficits. So slow down, focus on that self-awareness, and just know that you're worthy and deserving of the best. You don't have to go through life settling. You are deserving of the best, but you've got to be intentional about creating it for yourself and giving it to yourself and, and, and accepting nothing less than that. Wow. So Natalie, thank you for being on Beauty of Colors podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to Beauty of Colors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the program. And for more information, be sure to visit www.cleanjohnson.com.